So we've made it to the final section in this glorious book of Revelation, the final chapters in the whole Bible. And the sermon that I preached from this section I called Final Home. If you are just jumping in here at Revelation 21 and 22, then I do encourage you, go look at the videos that have uh, preceded this one. In chapter 1, we saw the glorified Jesus amongst his church, saying to his church, fear not. In chapters 2 and 3, uh, we saw the letters to the churches where we heard Jesus urging his people to make it to the glorious end victorious. In chapter 4, we were taken into the throne room of heaven, where we saw the Lord God Almighty seated on his throne, completely in control, ruling. In chapter 5, we were shown the Lamb. The Lamb really is the central figure in this whole letter. The same Jesus who said to his church, Fear not to, urged his church to make it to the end victorious. He is the Lamb of God who is worthy to open the scroll because he was slain and with his blood he purchased people for God. And so from this foundation of the first five chapters, we then saw that scroll of judgment being opened by the Lamb uh, in chapters 6 to 8. And we saw those who were sealed by the blood of the Lamb in chapter 7. Uh, they were safe from that judgment, the ultimate judgment that will come one day. In chapters 9 to 11, in the midst of the warnings of the trumpet sounding, we as the church were called to be a witness. Chapter 12 to 14 gave us a heavenly view of the events unfolding on earth. We saw that the dragon is hurled out of heaven. He's been defeated. And that whole section called God's people to patient endurance. Then in chapters 15 and 16, we saw this picture of final judgment of sinners and God's people were called to stay awake. And in chapters 17 to 19, we saw the fall of Babylon, a society that has set itself up against God. We saw it falling in those chapters. And that was a reminder to us that this is not home. Babylon is not our home. And then chapter 19, verse 11 uh, to chapter 20, verse 15, has showed us the final victory. And so these are the things that we've seen already. Because the Lamb is victorious, He wants us to make it to our final home victorious. And so He has reminded us throughout this book that this is not home. So we need to stay awake and endure in our witness as those who have been sealed by the blood of the Lamb, knowing that the Lamb on the throne is victorious. We can hear Him say, fear not. He will get us to the glorious end victorious. And so now in this section, we're given this incredible picture of our final home. And this is a picture of life as it was always meant to be, with all things new in the holy city. And we hear Jesus saying, I'm coming soon. If you haven't yet read these chapters, then take time and just soak in the wonder of the truth that we're given in this big picture of our final home. It's meant to encourage us as God's people to spend some time praying, asking God to help you to understand his word. And then, as always, I'm going to show you just some of what I've seen in the passage just to get you going in the passage. If you find this helpful, then like this video, share it with others, subscribe to my channel if you haven't done that already. And let's have a look at the glorious truth that we see about our final home in this section. God's people and their final home is described in a number of ways in this section. Uh, we see the holy city, the new Jerusalem. Uh, God's people there are they're spoken of as the bride, the people. God will be with us and we will be his children. Again, we're spoken of as the bride. But the, the holy city, the new Jerusalem, uh, as a picture of God's people, is a consistent way uh, that is uh, we are spoken of in this section 
uh, also see the 12 tribes of Israel and the 12 apostles of the Lamb. Uh, we saw uh, this description of God's people uh, back in chapter 4, where we saw the 24 elders who represented God's Old Testament people and God's New Testament people. And here on the gates of the city are the names of the 12 tribes and the foundations of the city are the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. So this city is a picture for us of all of God's redeemed people from the Old and New Testament. And we'll see that the city is in focus through a lot of this section. God's people are also called uh, his servants who will serve him. They are those who have washed their robes in the blood of the Lamb. They'll be able to enter into the city as citizens of this holy city. And the Lord Jesus says at the end, Great, the grace of our Lord Jesus be with God's people. Just to help separate out this uh, holy city here, I'm just going to mark these the holy city or the city. Now, as I've said a few times in our journey through Revelation, the lens through which we need to read this book is the Old Testament. The Old Testament prophets rendezvous here in Revelation, and they give us a framework to understand this. We mustn't read Revelation through uh, the lens of the popular news channels in our world. That will confuse us. And the Old Testament prophets who come into view here mostly are Isaiah and Ezekiel, so it's worth just going to read um, Isaiah 65 verse 17 to 25. It gives us a description of this, uh, the new heaven and the new earth. And then this whole description of the city here, if you go and look at Ezekiel chapters 40 all the way to chapter 48. That whole big section showed us a, a prophecy looking ahead to the city of God and the glorious final verse in Ezekiel. So when you get to uh, Ezekiel 48 verse 35 ends by saying, and the name of the city from that time on will be the Lord is there. And that is the most important thing we need to see very clearly in this section. Although this final home, this new Jerusalem, the people, the bride are spoken of and are very important for us to see, the thing that makes this final home so glorious is that God is there. The Lord is there. So just tracking where we see the Lord God in view here. God's dwelling place will be among the people. He will dwell with them. And then this central character who we've seen uh, in the whole of Revelation, the Lamb, he is clearly in view here again. We're told twice here that these words are trustworthy and true. And this is the title given to Jesus himself in chapter 19 verse 11. Another tool that we've seen John using the whole time through this book is what he sees or hears and in this section there's a lot about uh, what he saw, what he was shown and also what he did not see. We also have seen this throne since chapter 4 of Revelation and here the throne comes into focus again and particularly he who is seated on the throne. Chapters 2 and 3 introduced us to those who are victorious and those are the ones who make it to the glorious end and here we get to the glorious end and if you go and read those letters each of them in chapters 
2 and 3, we are told certain things that will be given to the victorious ones. And then if you read them alongside this description, uh, they are the things that were promised to the victorious ones are, are given in this section. Uh, things like the water of life. When those letters we were told about those who will eat from the tree of life. Uh, the repetition of life is also worth looking out for in this section. We also see a lot of talk about these uh, gates. The important thing though is that on no day Will its gates ever be shut? This is a city, a final home that is absolutely safe. If you go back and look for the video I made on Nehemiah chapter 3, as they were building the earthly city of Jerusalem in Nehemiah's day, we keep getting told in chapter 3 that they needed to put in the doors and bolts and bars. They needed to make the city safe because it wasn't safe. Here, the gates don't even need to be shut because this city is absolutely safe. As we saw here, John is, didn't see a temple because we're told that the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. In John chapter 2, uh, Jesus said, destroy this temple and I will raise it again in three days, talking about his own body. And here we see that fulfillment. Jesus is the temple. And then something we see repeated in the last few verses are this idea of what must soon take place. Jesus is coming soon. The time is near. I'm coming soon. And this call for him to come, come, come. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Behold, I am coming soon. We find this blessing here in chapter 22, verse 7. Blessed is the one who keeps the words of this prophecy written on the scroll. If you go look back at chapter 1, verse 3, you find a very similar benediction like this, and they act as bookends. So the words of this prophecy are the words of revelation here. God's final word to his church, a word to urge them to stay awake and endure because Babylon is not home. Endure in our witness as those who are sealed by the Lamb because the Lamb on the throne is victorious. Keep going. The final victory will be won because the great victory was won by the Lamb as His blood was shed on the cross. And so our final home is absolutely sure. Something noteworthy about this uh, tree of life is the particular word used. Uh, the Greek word is the word zulon. Zulos, um, which is the same word that is used in uh, 1 Peter 2 or Galatians 3, where Peter and Paul speak about the tree on which Jesus died. So this tree of life in the garden isn't the normal Greek word for tree. It is a dead stick that actually brought us life. So right in the, the garden, in this final home, we see that life-giving tree. It was disobeying God and eating from a tree in the Garden of Eden that brought the curse, but now we are told that no longer will there be any curse. There is no possibility of this world being cursed again, because what Jesus did on the tree of life has paid for the, the penalty for that curse, for our sin. And so what Jesus is giving to John in this uh, big final picture of the final home, he wants John to see life as it was always meant to be lived, in a place where God will make everything new. So all things are made new in this holy city, the long-awaited Ezekiel 40 to 48 city, where the Lord is there. A city with the river of life and the tree of life. A city where life will be lived as it was always meant to be lived. And then from verse 7 to 21, we just hear this constant repetition. I am coming. Come. I am coming. 
come, I am coming, come, come Lord Jesus. We, this whole picture is meant to cause us as God's people to long for that day when we will be in our final home. And the thing that makes this home so glorious is that God's dwelling place is with the people. God himself will be with them. The Lord is there. So the gates don't need to be shut. It's safe. He is the temple. We have free access to God forever. The sun doesn't need to shine because the glory of God gives the city its light. And the water of life and the tree of life are there. This is life as it was always meant to be that will be enjoyed by God's sealed people forever. So it's worth us enduring. The lamb on the throne is victorious. And one day that throne is coming to a new heaven and a new earth where we will dwell with God forever. It is worth continuing. It is worth longing for this final day. And it is our final home because of what the Lamb has done for us. So this section should cause us to worship God as we long for that day when we will be with him forever. Well, as you dig in further, um, I pray that this section will really just encourage you and spur you on to keep going for Jesus until that day when we make it to the glorious end, victorious. Well, God bless as you dig in further.